Hello, Dr. Zakhir Hussain with you, Senior ENT Consultant. The topic is allergic fungal rhinosinusitis. That means there is fungal infection of the sinus and because of the presence of fungal, there is allergic reaction in the body and we shall go into detail into it. So this video we'll, sh we'll see or we'll discuss in two parts, part one and part two. Part 2, I will deal mainly with the treatment and rest of everything I will deal in part 1, this part. Now, before going to the main topic, let me give a small introduction about the sinuses. We all have four sets of sinuses. This is the frontal sinus, maxillary sinus and you have ethmoid sinus here. I have drawn only in one side, it, it will be on both sides, ethmoid sinus. And the last pair, which is seen way behind the nose, this is a sphenoid sinus. So, infection of the sinus means sinusitis. That can be because of bacteria or fungus or can be any other cause. So, in this video, we are going to see mainly about the fungal rhinosinusitis and that too, specifically the allergic, allergic fungal rhinosinusitis. I will tell you the classification, you will understand better. See, normally everywhere we have fung fungus and fungal spores. Like how you get a plant from a seed, the spores it develops into a into fungus. Normally we breathe approximately this much amount of spores every day. Let me give you in a complete uh, figure. This is the number of spores we inhale normally per day. Which, which we, we, we do not realize and it does not produce any harm to us. It is normally seen in the air. Fungus, it has got so many important uses in our life. To start with, the most important being, these are decomposers along with, along with uh, bacteria. Suppose all the organic food which we eat, which we dispose of, after a few days we, we find that it is completely gone because of the decomposing effect uh, action of fungus and bacteria. Not only that, it raises, it helps us to raise bread, ferment wine, flavor cheese and most important being some of the drugs like the drugs which stop bleeding, external bleed, it helps us, we make some drugs from that, uh, from, the, from the fungus and uh, the penicillin group of drugs which is made from fungus penicillinium and some of the anti-metabolic demands, anti-cancer drugs, those are also made from fungus. Not only that, the, the normal in life, I am sure you all must have taken pizza. We used to, we used to see uh, mushroom slices in the pizza, on top of the pizza. So these are nothing but edible fungus. So last but not the least, you, uh, we can make so much of organic compost from this. I have just mentioned a few, there are so many important uses of fungus. But what happens is, this fungus can become harmful for us, especially in the sinus which you are discussing about. In some conditions, like in this condition, especially it results because of chronic bacterial sinusitis along with severe allergy. When you have severe allergy, you have the fungus and the main point is the presence of fungus, the fungus it activates the immune system of the body. So the immune system overreacts to it. That produces the uh, symptoms. Now, the classification of fungal rhinosinusitis, it can be divided into two parts invasive type and non-invasive type. The invasive type, you have the fungus in the sinus and every sinus head has got a mucosal lining. The fungus, it just gets deposited on the mucosa, the superficial lining. It penetrates down into the mucosa, penetrates down and invades the blood vessels and destroys the, the surrounding bones too. This is the invasive type. The non-invasive type is just opposite, it is deposited only on the top of the mucosa, that is the lining of the, lining of the sinuses. In that non-invasive type, you have three types, allergic, allergic fungal rhinosinusitis, fungal ball, saprophytic type. So this video, we are going to discuss only about the allergic type and about the fungal ball. And the saprophytic, I prepared a separate video, we have to go through that. So, this is the main topic, allergic fungal rhinosinusitis. So, as I have already mentioned, 
the atopic patient, those patients who are allergic, who are more prone for this, they are exposed to fungus and this presence of fungus, it produces allergic reaction in the body and they develop the complaints. So what are the complaints? The patient says that he gives a history of allergy which he has been suffering for a long duration and he says I used to get uh, sneezing a lot especially in the morning or after taking a cold bath or during the seasons and along with that it is associated with nasal discharge which is white in color and nasal block which is on both, you know, both sides of the nasal cavity and of late I am getting nasal obstruction especially on one side which is persistent and that particular side knows there is nasal discharge too with a thick bucoid discharge, thick whitish discharge and he complains also of hawking sensation or irritation of the throat and facial pain along with that occasionally he gets a headache and a decreased sensation of smell too. So this is a straightforward case. Now some of them they present with complication like because of the presence of fungus that is a case of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis from the nose it invades the eye and he gets eye complaints one like he gets eye pain there is prominence of the eyeball then he is not able to open his eyelids and sometimes his, even his vision can be involved he, he, uh, his vision will be decreased that is the eye involvement sometimes what happens is from the nasal cavity it spreads to the central nervous system of the brain where he comes with a severe unbearable headache along with vomit these are the two com common complications so uh, what I have uh, written here, this slide shows a common presentation and I have already mentioned about the complication too. So we would like to do a nasal endoscopy first to see the severity of the condition and then we can see most of the time we, can, we, we may be able to see a polyp or growth which is seen with smooth silvery uh, fleshy mass, multiple polyps will be seen and uh, sometimes we see specific finding of the fungus in the OPD itself. Now, Going, uh, coming to the investigations. So when you do a total count and differential count, the eosinophil count will be high which indicates he has got allergy and along with that if there is bacterial infection, the, sub, the C reactive protein or procalcitonin levels will be elevated. Usually we do quantitative analysis. Coming to uh, investigations specific for this, like to rule out allergy also, when you do an absolute eosinophilic count which comes to about around 400, 350 to 400, these levels will be increased. Not only that, if you do a C uh, serum, serum vitamin D assay, the value if it happens to be low, the allergic symptoms will be more. Means we have to supplement vitamin D to control the allergy too. Now these patients once diagnosed, they have to undergo surgery. So we have to remove the polyp and we will send the polyp for testing and before the surgery of course we need a CT scan. I will show you some of the CT scan, the, the normal CT scan as well as the findings in a case of fungal rhinosinusitis. So not only the polyp, we have to send the tissue which is removed for fungal serology also. Now we can do biopsy of the nasal mucosa in higher centers to, know, uh, to go into the detail of it. In case the patient has got a recurrent fungal rhinosinusitis and he has undergone more than two or three surgeries, we would like to do special tests for him which is other than the normal smear and fung culture which we normally do, we, we like to do fungal antigen specific IgG and along with that precipitating antibodies too. Not all the centers have it, only higher centers may have it. But routinely we will do a fungal smear and culture for sure. Now, these patients, most of them, they have bronchial asthma also. That means breathing difficulty, that means wheeze. So, they, so we have like to take chest x-ray and give a consultation to a pulmonologist where they would like to do a pulmonary function test to see the severity of the condition. Now, let me show you the CT scan. So, this one is a normal CT scan and this is a, this from a patient who has already been diagnosed as fungal rhinosinusitis. So, normally in the CT scan, normal CT scan, the sinuses will be black in color that indicates the presence of air. So, this is the maxillary, these are the maxillary sinus and these are the ethroid sinus. So, if you see here, on one side involvement, like how I mentioned before, you have a hypodensity or grey color and if you see carefully inside the white, white is serpiginous deposits. And we, in medical terms, we say it's double ring appearance or hyperdensity, so on. 
so these are nothing but deposition of heavy metals and this gives a uh, gives as a hint that this is a case of fungal renaissance and let me show you two more slides which one both with complications one with uh, where there is spread into the brain the other one which is spread into the eyeball here if you see there is a breach of the erosion of the bone the breach into the central nervous system and here from the nose it is spread into the eyeball the eyeball is pushed laterally those is both these conditions in any case of uh, fungal rhinosinusitis when there is a complication we like to take a CT scan and along with that we want a MRI scan too also now uh, we need to have two consultations one is allergy specialist that we should do only after the surgery say about uh, one month after the surgery and before surgery we would get we would like to get a clearance from the pulmonologist because they will have a few advice a uh, few medications to be given uh, intraoperative not only that and even postoperative and preoperative care too which is very important now let me tell you about the complications about allergic fungal rhinosinusitis i have already mentioned that the high possibility it can spread from the sinuses and from the nose into the eyeball or it can involve important nerves in the head and it can spread into the central nervous system like it can spread into the uh, brain too so in this video i have covered everything except for the treatment part so for the treatment part kindly watch my part 2 video and uh, that will give you in detail about it thank you so much